So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a logo in Inkscape using a concept called negative space. And you can see an example of it here. I'm going to show you how to create this logo right here. Negative space is a concept where you create an object without actually creating the object. You're using the negative space in that object to create the illusion of that object. You're using the edges and the borders of the subject of the graphic to create the illusion of there being something else in the logo. As you can see here, it looks like there is a number six in this logo, but there isn't. You can see there, it's just uh, an illusion created by the negative space in that logo, and it's better illustrated if I show you a copy of it with the colors inverted. You can see there's a three and a zero, and there's a six created within the negative space between the three and the zero. Uh, I, th I think this is a nice little concept that works well for logo designs if you have an acronym, like a three-letter acronym or numbers. It's a little bit of a tricky concept in that it doesn't always work for all letters and numbers, but when it does work, I think it makes for a nice, simple, timeless uh, logo design. And if you go to Google Image Search and you type in negative space logo design, you'll see what I'm saying. There's a lot of uh, inspiring designs people have created using the negative space concept. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. The first thing you're going to have to do in order to do this tutorial is to download the Sansita font because that's the font I used uh, to create this logo in this tutorial. So just go to the link in the description, click on that, download the font. It's called Sansita 1. It's free. Download it and install it. Once you have it installed, open up Inkscape and we'll get to work. So this will be your view when you open up Inkscape. Let's go up here to this button that says Edit Objects, Colors, Gradient, Stroke. Let's click on that to open it up. Then let's go to File, Document Properties, where it says Show Border. Let's turn that off. Show, bo show Border Shadow, we're going to turn that off. Make sure all three boxes are unchecked. Close that out. Let's go to View, make sure you have Custom Set, and then go to Zoom. Zoom one to one, just like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our text tool on the left hand side over here. Click on that and then click on the canvas and type in 360. And come up here to our, our text tool on the top. We're going to click on that and go through our list of fonts here and try and try to find the, the Sansita font you just downloaded. There it is, Sansita one. Highlight that, click apply, close that out. Now let's come over here to where it says opacity. Let's drop that in half. Slide that over to the left so that it's in half. Kind of like that. And then let's go back to our arrow tool. Let's click on that and hold control and click and drag on this bottom right arrow right here. And let's enlarge that. You want to make sure you're holding control when you're doing this so that everything scales proportionately. All right, so let's make that about that big. And let's go to path object to path and let's ungroup it by clicking on that button. Let's deselect everything by clicking on this button and let's click on just the number six. We're going to turn that red and we're going to raise this to the top by cl clicking this button right here that says raise selection to top. Now hold control and click and drag the six over to the left so that the edge of the six is overlapping the top and bottom portion of the three. And then come over to the zero, hold control, and click and drag this over to the left so that the edges of the zero are overlapping the top and bottom portion of the edges of the six. And once you've done that, come over to the Bezier pen. Let's click on that. And come up here to where it says Snap to Pads. We're going to turn that on by clicking it. And we're going to bring our cursor to the very top of the three over here. And once it snaps onto it like that, go ahead and click. Click it once and then drag the line over to the top of the six. And once it snaps onto that, click on that and come back up here to the snap to pads button. Let's turn that off for now. And we're going to bring this line right through the intersection between the top of the six and the edge of the zero. So bring that line through there to the inside of the zero and let's click and then bring the line down towards the bottom, click, and let's turn the snap back on. Come back up here, snap the pads. We're going to turn that on and bring the line down to the bottom edge of the, of the zero. And once it snaps onto that, click 
and bring it over to the bottom edge of the six. Once it, once it snaps onto that, click, and then come up here to where it says snap to pads, turn that off once and for all. And we're gonna bring that line straight up here through the intersection between the six and the bottom of the three. You wanna make sure that line is going right through that intersection, not outside of it, all right? So bring that through there right here, click, and bring the, continue to bring the line around the outside of the gap between the three and the six. You want the line to be on the outside of it like that. Bring it up to the top and then connect it all together by clicking on the box where the point is where we first created this shape. And it's gonna create one shape using the line we just used. So let's go over to our arrow. Let's hold shift and click the three. And then let's click on the zero. Go to path, union, and that's going to turn everything into one object. And what we're going to do now is we're going to use the six, the number six, to punch a hole through that shape, which is going to create uh, the number six within the negative space of this object. So let's click on the six, hold shift, click on the object in the back, and go to path, difference. And there you have it. It's that simple. You can bring the opacity back over to the right. You can make this any color you want. You can play around with it a little bit. Try different concepts of your own, different letters, different acronyms. You can even try putting this on a darker background. You can invert it so you can see what I'm saying. The, uh, the negative space is better accentuated when it's put on a dark background like that. I could show you an example of another logo I created where I used a, neg a negative space concept using the letters VFM. So as you can see there, I also use negative space there as well. So if you have any questions or if I missed any steps in this tutorial, just let me know and thank you.